Welcome to Inglit Mirror. Today, we deal with reader response theory. Reader response criticism or theory is a school of literary theory that focuses on the reader and their experience of a literary work in contrast to other schools and theories that focus attention primarily on the author or the content and form of the work. One can sort reader response theories into three groups. Those who focus upon the individual reader's experience. Those who conduct psychological experiments on a defined set of readers. And those who assume a fairly uniform response by all readers. In a more general sense, one can break down reader response theories into those who concern with the reader's experience and psychology, those who concentrate on the linguistic rhetorical dynamic of audience, and those who deal with readers as cultural and historical ciphers. Hans Robert Jaws, the German theorist, inspired by the phenomenological method of Husserl and Heidegger's hermeneutics, gave a historical dimension to reader-oriented criticism by developing a version of reader response criticism known as reception theory. Rose eschewed objectivist views of both literary texts and literary history and endeavored to attain an agreement between Russian formalism, which ignores historical and social contexts, and social theories as Marxism, which neglects the text. To him, a text is not simply and passively imbibed by the audience, but on the contrary, the reader makes out the meanings of the text based on his or her cultural background and experience. He exhorted that literature is a dialogic entity, a sort of dialogue between the text and the reader, a dialectic process of production and reception. He added that there is always negotiation and opposition on the part of the reader. Horizon of expectation, a term developed by Rose to explain how readers' expectations or frame of reference is based on the reader's past experience of literature and what preconceived notions about literature the reader possesses. That is, reader's aesthetic experience is bound by time and historical determinants. Reader response criticism tries to establish these horizons by analyzing the literary works of the age in question. Jose also contended that for a work to be considered a classic, it needed to exceed readers' horizons of expectation. The renowned cultural theorist Stuart Hall is one of the main proponents of reception theory. He developed it for media and communication studies from the literary and history-oriented approaches. Another leading exponent of German reception theory, Wolfgang Eiser, drew heavily on the phenomenological aesthetics of Roman in Garden and the writings of Hans George Gadamer. To him, the literary work is not an object in itself, but an effect to be expounded. The text is the result of the author's intentional acts and it controls readers' responses. In his work, The Act of Reading, A Theory of Aesthetic Response, published in 1976, Iser posits that all literary texts have least teller, that means blanks, gaps, which have to be filled in or concretized by the creative reader to interpret the text. Implied reader is a term used by Wolfgang Eiser to describe a hypothetical reader of a text. Such a reader is a model or a role. The implied reader embodies all those predispositions necessary for a literary work to exercise 
its effect predisposition is laid down not by an empirical outside reality but by the text itself consequently the implied reader as a concept has his roots firmly planted in the structures of the text he is a construct and in no way to be identified with any real reader the implied reader is established by the text itself who is expected to respond in specific ways to the response inviting structures of the text while the actual reader is the one whose responses are colored by his or her accumulated personal experiences one who receives mental images during the process of reading through the knowledge and experience of one zone however the implied and actual readers coexist and are truly one and the same person responding to a text in two different ways and levels of consciousness iser also describes the process of first reading the subsequent development of the text into a whole and how the dialogue between the reader and text takes place in his study of shakespeare's histories in particular richard ii iser interprets richard's continually changing legal policy as the expression of his desire for self assertion here he follows hans blumenberg and attempts to apply his theory of modernity to shakespeare he also maintained that there are two poles in a literary work the artistic pole the text created by the author and the aesthetic pole the realization accomplished by the reader in the 1960s david blitch began collecting statements from students of their feelings and associations he based his analysis on classroom teaching of literature and hold that reading is not determined by the text instead reading is a subjective process designed by the distinctive personality of the individual reader he also claimed that his classes generated knowledge the knowledge of how particular persons recreate texts norman holland makes use of psychoanalytic analysis of the process of reading he viewed the subject matter of a work as a projection of the fantasies that constitute the identity of its author to him reading is the encounter between the authors and the readers fantasies the reader transforms the fantasy content that constitutes the process of interpretation he also declared that there is no universally determinate meaning of a particular text Harold Bloom the prominent Yale critic has been noteworthy for his incorporation of Freudian conceptions of defense mechanisms into the realm of reader response theory he came up with the idea of anxiety of influence which defied the hitherto notion of influence that it is direct borrowing or assimilation of materials from earlier writers Bloom calls a poet a belated one or a fib who is motivated to compose a poem when his imagination is seized upon by a precursor's poem the fib has an ethical relationship with his or her precursor a relationship ambivalent mixed with admiration hate envy and fear of the precursor's encroachment into the belated imaginative space while reading the precursor's poem the ephib distorts it drastically due to anxiety of influence the struggle of wordsworth with milton shelley with wordsworth and wallace stevens with whitman are some of the instances given by bloom this concept could be related to t s eliot's idea of tradition bloom points out six revisionary ratios by which one read precursor's poem he also holds that even the best belated poets can only create a strong poem that forms an illusion of originality 
All readings are hence misreadings or mispresents. Antithetical criticism means criticism in terms of misreadings that are contrary to what the poet thought. Transactional analysis, a significant concept in reader response theory developed by Louis Rosenblatt, asserts that meaning is produced in transaction of a reader with a text. As an approach, then, the critic would consider how the reader interprets the text as well as how the text produces a response in him or her. Michel Refattery, Jonathan Culler and Terence Hawkes propose the idea of literary competence which maintains that mere linguistic competence is inadequate to understand literary meaning and that literary competence is necessary to go beyond the surface meaning of a text. There are really two kinds of reader response criticism that could be found in the writings of the American literary theorist Stanley Fish. One is a phenomenological approach and the other is an epistemological theory characteristic of Fish's later works. The phenomenological method has much to comment itself to us as it focuses on what happens in the reader's mind as he or she reads. Fish applies this method in his early work, Surprised by Sin, the Reader in Paradise Lost, published in 1967. His thesis in this work is that Milton used a number of literary techniques intentionally to lead the reader into a false sense of security, whereupon he would effect a turn from the reader's expectations in order to surprise the reader with his own prideful self-sufficiency. The supposed intent of Milton was to force the reader to see his own sinfulness in a new light and be forced back to God's grace. Fish's thesis is a rather ingenious approach to Paradise Lost and to Milton's misleading of the reader. Fish's concern at this point in his career was with what is really happening in the act of reading. And this is reflected in his compilations of essays entitled Is There a Text in This Class? which explains that members share a particular reading strategy. Each communal strategy creates the objective features of a text, hence no universal right valid reading, based on the theory of social construction of reality or knowledge. Fish defines his own phenomenological approach as an analysis of the developing responses of the reader in relation to the words as they succeed one another in time. He deals with what the text does as opposed to what it means. As J.F. Worthen suggests, much of his work can be seen as a reaction against the formalism that characterized the age of new critical theory which held that meaning was embedded in the textual artifact or as Wimsatt and Beardsley referred to it, the object. He suggests that the context for the discussion is a question of whether formal features exist prior to and independently of interpretive strategies. In the later phase of Fish's career, his theories evolve into a form of criticism that rejects the author intentionally and place meaning solely within the arena of those receiving the text. Thus, his theory is sometimes called reception aesthetics or affective stylistics. The necessary reliance of the critic upon his or her affective responses to the stylistic components of the text. The work and its effects are the same. A text is what it does. Fish claims that it is the interpretive community that creates its own reality. It is a community that invests a text, or for that matter, life itself with meaning. Those who claim that meaning is to be found in some eternal superstructure or substructure of reality, he labels foundationless. Naturally, because foundationalists comprise their own interpretive communities and interpret through such a grid, they will be opposed to theories such as his own. 
His theory is epistemological in that it deals not so much with literary criticism, although the implications for such are tremendous, as with how one comes to know. Reader response critics hold that to understand the literary experience or the meaning of a text, one must look to the processes readers use to create that meaning and experience. Objections Traditional text-oriented critics often think of reader response criticism as an anarchic subjectivism allowing readers to interpret a text any way they want. They accuse reader response critics of observing that the text doesn't exist. Another objection to reader response criticism is that it fails to account for the text being able to expand the reader's understanding. While readers can and do put their own ideas and experiences into a work, they are at the same time gaining new understanding through the text. This is something that is generally overlooked in reader response criticism. Thank you for watching this video.